watercolor technique IPN. What we're going to start off with is a large sheet of watercolor paper. And I'm trying to focus here. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our tape. And because this masking tape is very strong, it doesn't matter if you get the blue one or this one from the Dollar General store you will always have to put it a little bit on your pants or something so that it doesn't tear off your paper. You're gonna get a long piece that fits all the way across, tear it off, and then just put it on your pants or your clothes at least one or two times. And then you're going to put it about a third way of your Journal here. Let's see that way. So I'm trying to get this to focus. Sorry, my camera is just not doing a good job today. Come on. There we go. So then we will do the same thing for this one. And I'm just putting it on my pants just to get rid of too much of the tackiness. And I'm going to put it again a third of the way. Like that. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a set of four rolls. So I'm going to have to put one right here, right here, and another piece on the other side. So one right about there, make sure it fits. Putting it on my pants, and then I'll have right there. I don't have to press it down right away just because I want to make sure I have enough. Make sure it fits. And putting it on my pants. Okay, so you can kind of see what I mean, see how they're not even. It'd be nice to have them a little even so that when you are showing the different techniques, you can see them big enough and you don't have these tiny little squares. So I'm just gonna put this right smack down in the middle of my journal here. And this to where there's enough space to show all my different techniques. Oh, sorry, my camera just turned off. There we go. Hold on, guys, I'm having some technical difficulties. Not sure why. Okay. So now that I have my three square, uh, three pieces of tape on my journal to show my squares. I'm just gonna kind of press them all down, make sure that everything is good and solid. And then, I'm going to take my spray bottle and spritz down the whole thing. Be 
because this is watercolor paper and not regular printing paper, it will absorb the paper. Um, no, it will absorb the water in the paper. So what I'm going to do is with a clean brush, I'm going to take my brush and kind of swish and swash the, paper, the, the water around on my paper. So I'm just going to go like this, make sure the whole square is covered in water. Just like that. And while this is still wet, I'm going to put this, push this aside here and get my watercolors out. And I will do the same thing and spritz a little bit of water in each one, each little well here. So that the water can sit in the paint. Remind yourself that this is watercolor. You need lots of water. It's not the same thing as acrylic paint. So as you can see, there's a shininess to our paper. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your brush. And on this first one, we are going to do We are going to do the dry brush, which we can't do it because it's so wet. We're going to skip over and we're going to do a wash. A wash is taking one color and going from really, really dark to really, really light. So I'm going to dip my brush into my water. Bring this over here so you can see. I don't care which side you start on. You can start on whatever wherever section from, from the left or from the right. But what you're gonna do is dip your brush into the water and you're gonna pick a color, it doesn't matter which one, and you're gonna swish it around. You should not be able to see the color on the brush too much. So that means I need to add more water. It should look kind of like that see how it's fading off into the side that's me that means that you've got enough color but it's not just color it's more water so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go from here and then keep swiping up and down and move upward And then I'm going to wipe my brush and I'm going to move it again upward. Wipe my brush. So you can tell that the water is absorbing the color up here. And I'm just going to do one more wipe, clean my brush, or pat my brush. And see how it's fading from, from the paper to the actual color. And so I want to still emphasize that there's a little bit in here. I'm just going to wipe this down. I'm going to wipe it away. Wipe it away. And then I'm going to add a little bit more down here. So see, it went from really light, fading, fading, and then color, and then really, really dark. And because I have a pool of water here, which I don't want, I am going to just use a dry brush and just pat it down. Just like that. So you should have 
really light all the way to the dark. So you have value going on in here. The next one, you're gonna do a salt wash. This one is always the favorite. You're gonna dip your brush into the water, dip it into the paint, kind of swish it around a little bit. You shouldn't be able to see too much of the paint on there. And you're going to brush it all over that one square. So you should have one solid color. One solid color, just like that. See that? What it's going to do is we're going to do, going to let it kind of sit there for a few seconds. And what what's going to happen is it's going to do this really neat looking pattern like frost on a window. And since it's sitting there now, it's kind of drying up a little. I'm going to take some of this kosher salt, which is a little bit thicker than regular table salt. I don't know if you can see that. but we're gonna sprinkle some a little bit here and there, and I'm gonna drop a lot right there. And as you can see already, it started pulling the paint towards the salt. You can kind of see how it's gonna sit there. And so that is gonna create these little speckles in certain areas. The next one is gonna be a wet on wet. So what we just did at the beginning, we're just gonna color, put color on there. And usually this is a color mixing technique. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of yellow. And I'm gonna go to the top, just put a good amount on there, clean my brush, pat it down on some paper, and pick up an orange, or you know what? I'm not gonna pick up orange. I'm gonna pick up red. So remember, you need to get some water on the brush so it's kind of silky and shiny. And then you're gonna dip it in the other color, mix it around. Shouldn't see too much on there. And then brush, brush, brush. Now the difference between watercolor and acrylic is watercolor is very transparent, whereas acrylic and oil painting is very opaque and you can't really overlap certain uh, paints because you can't see through them. So if you were to draw something underneath this, you can see it. So look, at, look what it's doing it's merging into this color. And if you can't really see it, I have a picture right here of what it can do by itself. And this is what it's gonna do. So this is a wet on wet color mixing technique. Okay. Our next technique that we're gonna be doing is a alcohol. And I love to use the black for this one because it shows so much better. So my paper is kind of dry, so I'm just going to spritz it. And I'm going to put a little bit of black on here. First, to make a wash. And then I'm going to go back in and use a little bit more heavier because I want it to be kind of dark. Just like that. You see that? It's fully colored. Because of the light, it's kind of shiny. But now I'm going to get some alcohol, rubbing alcohol. And I prefer you don't do this with younger, younger kids like kindergarten through first grade. Maybe second, third, and fourth grade can do this. 
but you're gonna stick your brush into the alcohol and you're gonna tap it against your finger and it's gonna create these little specks. See how cool that looks? Let me do it one more time. There we go. So what happens is it's doing a chemical reaction with the water and the, the paint, and it's creating these dry spots because alcohol dries out um, water, and that's exactly what it's supposed to do. So because I added too much of this paint, I'm going to lift it off. just so it doesn't have too much to pull on and do it again so I can see the actual technique being used. There we go, that's a little bit better. And just let it sit there and dry. And our next technique, we're gonna be doing scratching. So for scratching, we need a type of tool that doesn't scratch too hard, that tears the paper. We need something that is gonna be kind of blunt. So I'm looking for my tool and I had it just a minute ago. Where did my tools go? There it is. Okay, so this tool I'm using a sharpened chopstick. And I'm going to use this square because it's still really wet. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to dig into it like carving. I'm just going to take it and go across, go across. And then I'm going to make one go this way. OK. Now, you can't really see the scratches, but they're there. And I'm gonna pick up some paint and water. Okay. And I'm just gonna brush it all over that area. See how it's, it's not flowing everywhere? Okay, you don't want that. You want it really watery. Just like that. Okay, now you can see the scratch marks because now, because the paper had been indented, it leaves a line inside the paper and it creates this little area to pull the colors. So that one is our scratching technique. Now we're gonna do a ghost technique. And to do a ghost technique, you need some sort of item that is flat. And I'm going to take this bitty piece of straw and my scissors, and I'm going to just cut a little bit off of it. You can use anything from a penny, from a torn piece of paper, um, a hair tie, a piece of string, anything like that. So I'm going to do this next one at the bottom. It's not completely wet like I like, so I'm going to spritz it and brush it all over again. Pick up my color, which I want to try. Let's just try brown. The 
just gets a really nice earthenware look. The last video I used, I used string. And the reason I like to use the string is because it had the fibers in it. And I'm gonna grab a piece of that. And then here's the string. I'm gonna kind of just run it through the water. And dry it. And then I'm just gonna stick it on there. Just kind of push it down. And I'm gonna take these two and kind of chunk them on there. So I'm gonna leave that like that. And what this is gonna do is gonna pull the color towards it and it's gonna leave like this weird looking, uh, uh, the fibers from where the color got pulled in. So if you look at that, oh, it's so cool. Looks like a worm. So that's what that's gonna do. And I'm just gonna press it down some more. Just like that. Our next one we're gonna do is the plastic wrap. And let me grab a piece of plastic. Here. Tear this thing out. And then for this technique, we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing for the past other squares. Make sure it's nice and wet. And I like to use blue for this one because it always reminds me of uh, frozen freckles on a window when it's cold outside. So I'm just gonna do this, put plenty of paint on there and take my piece of plastic. Off the hand, okay. And I'm gonna kinda stretch it out a little bit I'm going to put it right on top of this and kind of press it down with my finger. And so this technique, because you see it pulling in certain areas, it's going to do this when you peel it off. Look how cool that looks. That's so neat. Okay, that one is our plastic wrap. Now let's go to the wax resist because it's a little dry. This is great to, to have, but it's still damp. I can feel it. We're going to take a, I'm going to take a white crayon because it's always fun, like how you do Easter eggs. I'm just going to make a drawing here of a daisy. There we go. Uh, I know you can't see it because of the light, but let's go with some, some orange. Pick up some paint and we're going to just swipe it along here. Add some more water because we don't want paint paint, we want water. And so see how the crayon is saying, no, we don't want water here. So we're just going to pull you out, pull you out of there. And it's slowly but surely going away from those certain areas. See how it's revealing itself? I'm just picking it up from where it's pulling and it shouldn't pull. There we go, it's too much water. That's okay. 
So you can see this in this demonstration here where the pink pushed all the blue paint out and it was left with just these areas. So that's what this is going to do. And you can't see it now, but eventually the, when it starts to dry, the wax will push everything out onto the outside. Okay, so for our next one, we are going to do a tape resist because I said it's damp, that's great. We want to kind of damp, not too, too dry. I'm going to take a piece of the masking tape, roll it on the leg, and I'm just going to cut out shapes like this one. I want to be a triangle as best as I can get it. I'll put it right here. Um, try to cut out a circle. Just like that. I'm going to add it here. And then keep some other shapes right there. Tiny little piece that's stuck on my finger here. Just like that. Just kind of random. Make something. You can even make a scenery with that. And then again, you're going to wash it with some paint by spritzing. Water bottle wants to spritz. There we go. Kind of wash it all over the square. And then you're going to take your color and start with purple again. And then wash it over that. Because this one is a little bit time lapsing, what this one is going to do is after it dries, you're going to peel the paper off. And this demonstration, you'll see that it leaves the shapes. So I, I took the paper off. There's no tape on there. Okay, now that we're done with that one, we're going to move on to the dry brush because this is a little dry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to really, really dry my paintbrush and kind of swish it around in my hand and flow it out, flare it out like this. If you have another brush and it looks like this, this is perfect, but we don't want to do that too much with the new brushes because it'll damage the fibers. So I'm just kind of pulling them apart, kind of like when you're drying your hair. And I'm going to use the very tips to dip in the paint. So I'm going to show you how I'm doing that. I'm just going to dip the tip in there. So. Just dip, 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 tip, tip, tip. And then brush it off. Okay, Oop, that's too much. See how it was showing too much on there? Okay, now going back to our dry brush section, I'm just gonna swipe. Get some more, swipe. Oh, that's too heavy. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Think of this as when you're using a, a really gross looking marker and that's that's the kind of color you're you're getting because it's there's no more ink in it. That's kind of what you're looking for. Okay, so then our next one we're looking at is the lifting, which you're gonna need a piece of paper towel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the cloud effect that I always do. I'm going to use blue and spritz this down. And oh, beautiful. I love it. It needs to be heavy, not dark, but still see through. Oh, 
away the whole thing. And then, okay, let that sit for a few seconds and we're gonna move on to the next one, which is stamping. The stamping is you're gonna use a object or a type of paper to stamp into this particular area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing again, spritz it with water. If it lets me. Some more water in here. Okay. Gonna spritz it. Swish it around. And I want to have this really cool, like, race car effect. So I'm going to add this orange. And this is, this part is going to get a little messy. So uh, beware. But remember, this is only watercolor. It's, it'll, it's water soluble. It'll come off and it won't stain. So I got the color on there and I'll let it kind of dry and come back to this one. This one, like I said, is lifting. So you'll take a piece of this uh, paper towel and kind of squish it down. And I'm gonna dab it onto the wet parts. So I'm gonna just do this. And you can see where the areas are lifted. I don't have to do this one more time. There we go. And when it dries, it'll give this effect where it, it's not very good, but it did leave some spots darker than the others. But it kind of looks like clouds from far away. So when this dries, you'll see it a little bit more defined. Now back to this one. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to find a tool or I'm going to actually use this lid from the alcohol. I'm going to paint these lines with some black and I'm going to use a little bit of heavy paint. See how it's on there really good because I want this design to pop out when I run over it with the uh, orange. And I still have to wait because it needs to dry. I'm going to do the same thing for this and let this dry for a few seconds. So in previous courses, we had students do almost the same techniques here. See, there's the cloud. Looks a little bit more defined. They had the color mixing, which is really pretty. Um, some more color mixing. They had their salt wash. And then here are some more examples. Here's the ghost of the key. So you can see where the color I laid down and then I just dropped down some items and the, the, this item for this one was the key. And here is what I'm trying to reproduce is this idea of something being ran over. This is a print. And here is the uh, plastic wrap. So now that this is kind of dry, a little bit dry, and so I want it to dry a little faster, I'm gonna pat it with some paper just to dry it a little bit more faster. 
glass or even give it a little texture. Who knows? Just a little bit of both. Just like that. And checking to see this, see how the paint is kind of dry. And I'm just going to run it over with my lid and do it again. Just like that. One more time. I'll make a mess. There we go. So you can't really see it, but there's some lines in there. And when it dries, it'll leave that mark, those kinds of marks. So let me, let me zoom in. There you go. You can kind of see it right there. So I'm going to go over them one more time and I'm going to write them onto the uh, tape. Remember, you have to take the tape off. There is no tape that's supposed to be on the paper. So this is, this is the dry brush. Okay. This is the plastic wrap. This is the alcohol, which it disappeared. So that means I have to do this again. That's, that is something you don't want to show because it's not even on there. So there, I have it again. And this is the alcohol. And this one is the wash. Sorry for my handwriting, guys. It's a big marker. And then this is the lip. This one is the crayon. This is the scratch. Salt wash. This one is the stamp. And this one's the tape. on the ghost and the color mixing. So those are the 12 main techniques. And I want you to create uh, four of your own experimentals, which is a wet and wet with a salt wash. So two colors, salt wash. It look, should look like this one, like that, two colors, salt wash, um, two colors with a plastic wrap. So mix these two colors with the plastic wrap technique. Um, you can even do a mix of colors with the scratches. You can do a mix of colors with alcohol. And then you can even do the glue resist. Now the glue resist, you will need to set and dry and make sure you leave it alone until it's really hardened. And then you paint on top of it. I had an example before, but it, oh, you can't really see it. But there's glue on it. It was dried out and then it was painted over. So that's the other one. Those are the several techniques that you can use. Then you take pictures of all of them, put them in your IPN, and put your notes.
what you did in the process, what was more fun than the others, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. That's it for this lesson. That is what you need to do for your IPN.